Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless it seems as though god is putting his focus back on the land of israel in these last days there has never been a bigger push for peace in the middle east than we are witnessing right now francis macron calls for relaunch of palestinian peace process emmanuel macron says stability is only possible if israel allows for a political approach to end the conflict. Macron says legitimate Palestinian state would benefit Israel. Macron calls for Israel and the Palestinians to live side by side in peace and security. 1 Thessalonians 5.3 While people are saying there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman and they will not escape. If Israel defends its security, fights against violence, but also accepts the legitimate right of Palestinians to have a state to live in peace and in security side by side with Israel, because it will have integrated the existence and the security of Israel as a primary condition. Emmanuel Macron touches down in Tel Aviv, a diplomatic push that comes after those of his American English, German and Italian counterparts, 17 days after the Hamas attacks, which left some 1,400 dead in Israel. After talks with his Israeli counterpart Isaac Herzog, the French president reaffirmed his solidarity with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Israel has a legitimate right to defend itself against those who are carrying out this destruction. Israel's security cannot be sustainable without a decisive relaunch of the political process with the Palestinians. I thank you. Uh Emmanuel, for coming here to Israel, for standing with Israel, for standing with us in Israel and expressing your support. We rely on your continued support. Macron also called for a humanitarian truce in Gaza to allow access for international aid and the release of hostages. The Elysee says the head of state will also meet with the Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas in the occupied West Bank, where he plans to propose relaunching the peace process with the aim of creating a viable Palestinian state. Amid Israel-Hamas war, Macron meeting Netanyahu and Abbas in quest for long-term negotiated solution. My question is this, why is Macron's mission a long-term negotiated solution and not a permanent one? The Bible tells us a man will come on the world scene with a long-term negotiated solution. Daniel 9, 26 and 27 And after the 62 weeks, Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end of it shall be with the flood, until the end of the war desolations are determined. Then he, the Antichrist, shall confirm a covenant with many, who is Israel, the Palestinians and possibly other Muslim nations for one week, which is seven years. But in the middle of the week, three and a half years, he, the Antichrist, shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering. And on the wings of abominations shall be one who makes desolate, even until the consummation, which is determined, is poured out on the desolate. In Bible prophecy, we are told in Daniel 9, 26 and 27, the prince who is to come, who is the Antichrist, will come on the world scene and strongly confirm a seven-year covenant of peace in the Middle East between Israel and her enemies. This covenant will kick off the seven-year tribulation. Are we seeing any signs of a covenant of peace in the Middle East between Israel and her enemies today? I would like to send a warning to Hezbollah, to forces in Iran and other forces that are threatening Israel. Do not take the risk of widening this regional conflict, of opening new fronts. This would be opening the door to an escalation in which there would be no winners. For all of the people of the region, we must do everything possible not to pour more tears on tears, more blood on blood. I would like to draw everyone's attention to the act of several people against 
Palestinian civilians that is causing the threat of further violence in the West Bank as well. In order to find sustainable peace, we can only hope to achieve this with the political support of the Palestinian people. Hamas is a terrorist group, and it does not the standard bearer for the Palestinian cause. It must be fought, and we must listen to reasonable Palestinian forces. Regional stability, return to normalization, can only take place if Israel defends its security, fights against violence, but also accepts the legitimate right of Palestinians to have a state to live in peace and in security side by side with Israel, because it will have integrated the existence and the security of Israel as a primary condition. The shared struggle against terrorism, the respect of humanitarian law, Opening political perspectives, all of these elements are necessary. We must act here and now. We must fight against terrorism, and we must offer hope. Once again, Mr. Prime Minister, thank you for your welcome. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your commitment against terrorism. And in the coming hours, we will continue to work together. We will define a list of actions. I will be going to Ramallah at the end of the day. Tomorrow, I will be with other regional leaders to see how we can move forward on our agenda. We had a very precise discussion, and I want to thank you for that. Now, we will follow up this discussion in the coming hours in order to see what we can improve in the coming days, but I'm sure in the coming weeks and months. I know how committed you are. Let me express once again my solidarity, my friendship, and the fact that France stands with you in this awful terrorist act you had to experience. We are with your people. Thank you, Emmanuel. Since you mentioned the regional aspects, let me say a word about that. Uh, there is a battle here between the axis of evil led by Iran, Hezbollah, Hamas, Houthis, uh, their uh, minions. Uh, we're fighting uh, to bring back the Middle East, the world, to the early Middle Ages with that kind of barbarism, with bondage, with slaughter, with murder. And there's the axis of uh, the free world and the moderates who want to bring the world to the progress and prosperity of the 21st century. This is the battle. It's engaged now. The test for the West and for civilization is Hamas. If Hamas emerges victorious, we will all lose. Europe will be endangered. Everyone will be endangered. Civilization will be endangered. So if Hamas wins, if Hamas loses and is defeated, then the forces of civilization win. That is why this battle is not merely our own. It's Europe's battle. It's America's battle. Uh, it's civilization's battle. It's the battle for the heart and soul and the future of the Middle East and the Arab world. Uh, I think many understand that, but there's no going around the fact that we must have a decisive victory against Hamas. If Hezbollah makes the mistake of joining this war in a significant way, it will regret it. They will long for the second Lebanon war, which they regretted. Because they're embedding themselves like Hamas in the civilian population in Lebanon, we will have to take action against them. And the devastation against Hezbollah will be unimaginable. So I hope they heed your warning, our warning, the warning of uh, the United States not to do so. But if they will, they'll suffer horrible consequences. We have to join together and win. The forces of civilization, progress, <coughs> have to win. That goes through the defeat of Hamas. I thank you, Emmanuel, for everything. Thank you. You said, and thank you for coming here and standing with us. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. We see the prophesied Antichrist right onto the world stage in Revelation 6-2. Immediately following the rider of the white horse beginning his conquest of the world, we see peace will be taken from the earth when the rider of the red horse of war begins his ride across the earth as we read in Revelation 6-3 and 4. When he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature saying, Come and see, another horse. 
fiery red went out, and it was granted to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth, and that people should kill one another, and there was given to him a great sword. Those who are here to see this will be as those who lived in the days of Noah. All will be well and life will be moving forward as normal when suddenly a flood of God's judgment will begin to fall on mankind which will last for seven years, the culmination of which will be the visible, physical, bodily return of Jesus Christ to the earth at Armageddon. So as we look at what prophecy predicts is going to occur, potentially in the not too distant future, the world is someday going to rejoice that peace has finally come to the Middle East. What will follow that, however, will be anything but peace as the world is suddenly going to explode into warfare. Is the sudden destruction coming, and with it the rapture of the church, the revealing of the Antichrist, and war? All those who believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior will not be here to see the terrible time to come wherein God's judgment will fall upon a world that has forgotten him. Where will we be? In the presence of Jesus Christ our Lord as a result of the rapture of the church. And there will be no announcement as to when that will take place whatsoever prior to it occurring. And if you find yourself here after it occurs, your future is going to be horrific. The stage is being set for Daniel's prophecy concerning the arrival of the Antichrist, which will be preceded by the rapture of the church. The only conclusion one can draw from all this is this. Jesus Christ is coming soon. Consider this a heads up if you're a Christian, and be forewarned if you're a non-believer. If you're watching this and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it's time to get to know him, and the sooner the better. Is global chaos the new normal? As anyone can plainly see, the world is in a state of decay moral, economic, political, every way possible. People are saying the world is out of control and looking for someone, anyone, to rescue the planet. Soon, very soon, a leader will appear on the horizon that appears to have all the answers, to calm the oceans, to bring peace to all the nations. His title will be the Antichrist and he will be welcomed by millions of those on earth not taken with the rapture. Unfortunately, his true identity will be known soon to those left behind that his true intentions are death, destruction, and control. So yes, global chaos is the new normal until the Lord Jesus Christ comes at the end of the Antichrist's seven-year reign of terror and establishes true peace on earth. What do we know about the Antichrist? The Antichrist has many names. The King of Fierce Countenance. The Prince who is to come, the beast, the son of perdition, the worthless shepherd, the man of sin, the lawless one. The first sealed judgment in the book of Revelation is the releasing of the Antichrist upon the earth. Revelation 6, 1 and 2. Now I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures saying with a voice like thunder, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a white horse. He who sat on it had a bow, and a crown was given to him, and he went out conquering and to conquer. The Antichrist will be evil, yet appear as a savior. Daniel 8.25 Through his cunning, he shall cause the seat to prosper under his rule, and he shall exalt himself in his heart. He shall destroy many in their prosperity. He shall even rise against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without human means. He will be outspoken and have great speaking ability. Revelation 13.5 And he was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and he was given authority to continue for 42 months. The Antichrist will have a fierce countenance. Daniel 8.23 And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors have reached their fullness, a king shall arise, having fierce features, who understands sinister schemes. He will be extremely proud. Daniel 11, 36 and 37. Then the king shall do according to his own will. He shall exalt and magnify himself above every god, shall speak blasphemies against the god of gods, and shall prosper till the wrath has been accomplished. For what has been determined shall be done. The Antichrist will not desire women. Daniel 1137. He shall regard neither the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any God, for he shall exalt himself above them all. He will be a military genius. Revelation 13.4. So they worshipped the dragon, who gave authority to the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, 
who is like the beast, who is able to make war with him, the Antichrist, will be mortally wounded. Revelation 13, 14. And he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who is wounded by the sword and lived. Zechariah 11:17. Woe to the worthless shepherd who leaves the flock. A sword shall be against his arm and against his right eye. His arm shall be completely withered and his right eye shall be totally blinded. The Antichrist will be indwelt by Satan. Daniel 8.24 His power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. He shall destroy fearfully, and shall prosper and thrive. He shall destroy the mighty, and also the holy people. He will come from a revived Roman Empire. Daniel 9.26 And after the 62 weeks, Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end of it shall be with a flood, until the end of the war desolations are determined. The Antichrist will control a one-world monetary system known as the Mark of the Beast. Revelation 13, 16-18 He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, his number is 666. He will control a one world religion. Revelation 13, 11 and 12. Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth and he had two horns like a lamb, and spoke like a dragon. And he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence, and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. The Antichrist will control a one-world government. Revelation 13.7 It was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them, and authority was given him over every tribe tongue, and nation. Our world is preparing for a one-world government, a one-world religion, and a one-world monetary system. It seems like a good time for Satan to present the lawless one to the world. 2 Thessalonians 2, 7-12 For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion, that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. We need to ask ourselves the question, could Emmanuel Macron be the Antichrist? Over the years, there has been much speculation as to who the Antichrist is. One of the most recent suspects is French President Emmanuel Macron. While the Bible gives many characteristics and clues about the Antichrist, I believe Christians will not know who he is until after the rapture. Many people believe Trump to be the Antichrist, while this, in my opinion, is not very likely. I think Emmanuel Macron would be more of a suspect than Trump. Macron and Trump have two very different ideas about how peace in the Middle East needs to come about. President Trump, obviously, is a nationalist and is strongly for Israel and recognized Jerusalem as its capital, something that Francis Macron absolutely does not agree with. Macron is a globalist who thinks that Israel should be divided and given to the Palestinians. It is likely that when the Antichrist is revealed, we all will be very surprised at his identity. The most prophetic event to happen in the 20th century was the regathering of the Jewish people to their ancient homeland in the Middle East, resulting in the creation of the nation of Israel on May 14, 1948. The second most prophetic event was the formation of the European Union. Both of these prophetic events point to the fact that we are living in the end times, right on the threshold of the tribulation and the Lord's return. 
The book of Daniel tells us a unified Europe will rise in the end times out of the ashes of the old Roman Empire. The book of Daniel also tells us the Antichrist arises from this end times revived Roman Empire. The book of Daniel chapters 2 and 7 is where a unified European sign is revealed. The book of Daniel chapter 9 verse 26 is where we learn where the Antichrist arises from. And after the 62 weeks Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end of it shall be with the flood, until the end of the war desolations are determined. The people spoken of are the Romans who destroyed the temple in 70 AD. The prince who is to come is the Antichrist. Since we know the people who destroyed the city, Jerusalem, and the sanctuary, the second temple, are the Romans, and the prince who is to come, the Antichrist, is of the Roman people, we know that the Antichrist comes from and will head the last Gentile empire in world history, a revived Roman Empire. The prophecies given to Daniel in these chapters relate to the latter days as we read in Daniel 2.28. But there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets, and he has made known to King Nebuchadnezzar what will be in the latter days. Daniel's prophecies are based upon a dream which God gave to King Nebuchadnezzar. Interpreting that dream, Daniel concluded that it revealed the succession of Gentile empires beginning with the Babylonian Empire, followed by Medo-Persia, Greece, Rome, and a revived Roman Empire. The last Gentile world empire will be a confederation of nations that will arise out of the old Roman Empire. And out of that confederation, the Antichrist will arise, using the revived Roman Empire as his base to conquer the world. But this final Gentile Empire will be short-lived, for it will be suddenly crushed by the return of the Messiah, who will set up a kingdom which will never be destroyed. It seems as though we are witnessing the fulfillment of these ancient prophecies of Daniel right before our very eyes. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world, as we know it, is near. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive in faith the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is Accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning. My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.